Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all-new B-Link U59 mini PC powered by the new Intel Jasper Lake CPUs. In the coming months, we'll probably see a lot of these mini PCs powered by the Jasper Lake line of CPUs, but this one has the Intel Celeron M5095. We have four cores, four threads, up to 2.9 gigahertz with integrated Intel UHD graphics. Now, the UHD graphics have been upgraded on the Jasper Lake versus the the Apollo Lake or the Gemini Lake. We actually have 16 execution units here instead of 12, and we have a maximum frequency up to 750 megahertz. So we should see a little boost in GPU performance over the Apollo Lake and the Gemini Lake, but the mini PC we're taking a look at today is the B-Link U59. This is the 8GB version, so we have 8GB of RAM and a 256GB M.2 SSD. Now, along with the mini PC, we're also going to get some mounting hardware for a 2.5 inch drive because we do have enough room, a 6 foot HDMI cable, and a 12 volt 3 amp power supply. Taking a look at the I.O. on this little mini PC, up front here we have two USB 3.0 ports and USB Type-C. Moving around back, we have two full-size HDMI ports, gigabit Ethernet, and two more USB 3.0 ports. The chip they're using in here has a 15 watt design, but this is a fan unit. It's not passively cooled. And through my testing so far, this thing has not gotten loud whatsoever, but it's only running at 15 watts. N5095, four cores, four threads, up to 2.9 gigahertz, eight gigabytes of DDR4, and the way it's set up right now out of the box with the eight gigabyte version, we only have a single stick, but we do have two DIMMs, and you can bring this all the way up to 32 gigabytes. We do have AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0. This could be upgraded to Wi-Fi 6 if you want to, because it's using a smaller Intel card. And the unit I received actually had Windows 10 Home pre-installed, but you could always upgrade this to Windows 11 if you feel the need. Now the first thing I wanted to do was just pull the bottom off of this and show you the upgradeability, because for a small PC we do have some options here. They've set it up so the main drive is an M.2 SSD, but we do have room for a 2.5 inch mechanical or SSD drive. I would highly recommend using an SSD because it's much lower powered. And they do include hardware to mount your drive in here. We also have the option to upgrade the RAM. Now with the 8 gigabyte model, we only have a single stick. So this is running in single channel, but that's exactly how I'm going to test it. I want to test it in its stock form to see how it performs. But you can always upgrade this to 32 gigabytes, and you can swap out that M.2 SSD really easily. It will support up to a 1 terabyte drive. So jumping right into it, it comes pre-installed with Windows 10 Home. We've got that Intel Celeron N5095. 8 gigabytes of RAM running in single channel, and those built-in Intel UHD graphics. So I've done a little testing on the CPU side of things, and this is running at 15 watts out of the box. In the BIOS, we can actually change the power level, but it doesn't take effect. I've tried to take it up to 25, and it will only run at 15. I was really hoping I could up the performance a bit here, but for everyday normal use, you know, web browsing, email checking, this little chip and the RAM they've included here actually works out really well. With that AC Wi-Fi, all of these pages load up really quickly. And keep in mind, this does have gigabit Ethernet built in, so you can always go wired with it. But so far, it's been a pretty pleasant experience just, you know, surfing the web, checking email and things like that. Even YouTube video playback on this works out really well. The first thing I want to throw at this is some 4K video. Now, the monitor I'm using here is set at 1600 by 900 just so you can see it a little better. But I'm going to go ahead and up it completely to 4K with no scaling, and then we'll test out a 4K 60fps video from YouTube. Alright, so here we are, 4K 60fps. I'll turn Stats for Nerds on, just make sure we are at 4K. And the reason I wanted to turn scaling off and up the resolution on this monitor is because sometimes when you view a 4K video on a 1080p setup, your view window is really only 1080p. So with scaling all the way off and this monitor set at 4K, we have a true 4K experience here. And it looks like on the initial load in, we did have some drop frames, but I think it's going to smooth itself out. We'll get a bit closer to stats for nerd so we can see what's going on here. So upon the initial load in, we had quite a few drop frames. We're sitting at around 90 here. I haven't seen it drop many more since then, and I do think that this could be ironed out with an extra stick of RAM. Because when it comes to these integrated GPUs, running it in dual channel definitely helps out, even with video playback here. 
The next thing I did was run a couple benchmarks. First up, we have Geekbench 5 coming in with a single core score of 647 multi-1725. It's definitely looking pretty low when you compare it to the newer mini Ryzen PCs that are hitting the market, but for these Intel Celerons, this is beating out that 4100 and 4125 for sure. Next up, we have 3 d Mark Wildlife with a 1371. And finally, we have Night Raid with a 2,596. Now with both of these, Wildlife and Night Raid, I'm sure we could up this score by a bit if we added an extra stick of RAM, but I wanted to keep it stock, keep it just like it sits coming out of the box. So in this video, we're definitely going to be testing out some native PC games and emulators running on this thing, but with a smaller, low-powered unit like this, I'd say your best bet would be cloud gaming. GeForce Now, Stadia, or one of my favorites, Xbox Cloud Gaming, formerly known as xCloud. So we're going to get in here, and for this test, I did plug in Ethernet. Keep that in mind. It will help out. Here we have Forza Horizon 5 using xCloud. I've got an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth to this mini PC. When it comes to game streaming, you shouldn't have any issues. The CPU has more than enough power. I would have loved to see this come out of the box with Wi-Fi 6, but if you had to do Wi-Fi and you have a good connection at the house, you could get away with the AC. But Ethernet is really the way to go. So we know this thing can handle cloud gaming, but what about native PC gaming? Well, for this, I did go with some lower end stuff because I know exactly how this little chip's gonna perform now. We have Dead Cells, this is the Steam version. Resolution is set at 1080p, and we're at 60. I do see some dips every once in a while, but you know, these newer indie 2D games should be good to go on a box like this. Next up, Skyrim, the original version. We're at 720p, low settings, and I thought we'd get a little more out of this. I was pretty sure at low 720p we could run this at 60, but I only got an average of 48 FPS. And finally here, Left 4 Dead, 720p with a low medium mix. We are over 60, I got an average of 71 FPS out of this, and we could probably run this at 1600 by 900. But like I mentioned several times, adding that extra stick of RAM will help out with this integrated GPU. You're not going to be able to play AAA games 1080p 60 on this, but we should get better performance out of the older stuff that I tested. So we now know how it handles running PC games natively on this hardware, but what about emulation? This is my favorite part of these tests. And first up, we have Dreamcast using Redream. FPS is up in the top left hand corner, I am at 1280 by 960 and when it comes to this little chip, we're not going to have any issues with Dreamcast, especially using the Redream emulator. This is running great here, we got a constant 60 and we could upscale it a little more, but I just left it here because it still looks great. Next on the list, PSP using PPSSPP, Chains of Olympus, 2x resolution, Vulcan back in, it will run at full speed, and with easier to run titles, you can go all the way up to 5x with this new N5095 CPU. And the final thing I wanted to test on this little PC was some GameCube emulation using the Dolphin emulator. FPS for this is up in the top right hand corner, it's Automotalista, this is one of my go-to tests. It is a harder one to run on lower end chips, and at the native resolution with the Vulcan back end, it's running great. I mean, we're at 60 FPS, but this doesn't mean that this will run every single GameCube game at full speed. I did try F-Zero GX, and we got a lot of stutters with that one using the same exact settings. But when it comes to a ton of these GameCube games with the Dolphin emulator, this little chip does an amazing job. So in the end, we're actually getting some pretty decent performance for the chip used in this box, but I'm really not impressed, and it really comes down to the form factor. This is a big mini PC when you compare it to others like the Chewy Lark box. And if we could see this chip in a PC that size, I think it would have made a big difference. I mean, just the form factor of the unit. And I'm pretty sure we will see something in 2022 around this size with these similar chips. But given the form factor of the U59, and we have similar sized mini PCs with i3s, i5s, i7s, and even the new 5000 series Ryzen, this just didn't seem that impressive. But then again, you need to factor in the price. Those higher end PCs with the i7s and the Ryzen chips are going for $500, $600, $900, and even sometimes $1,200. This is coming in with a $250 price tag, so there will be a huge jump in performance between those units. But personally, I can't wait to see smaller form factor PCs with this chip. I think it's great for web browsing, email viewing, YouTube video playback, and even cloud gaming. 
But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more, maybe picking one of these up, I will leave a link in the description. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.